So today let's talk about the difference between an epidural and a subdural hematoma. First of all, we need to know where are the meninges, right? Where are they found? What do they look like? How are they organized, etc. So let's say here we have our brain just above it. We have wrapped just around it is our pia matter. So P. Above that would be the arachnoid. And then just above that would be the dura matter. And then of course our cranium. Okay, so we're talking about epidural versus subdural. What that means is if we have an epidural bleed above the dura, it should be somewhere over here, located out in this area between the cranium and the dura. Whereas if it's a subdural hematoma, correct, it would be down here, underneath the dura. Okay, please know the difference between the two. Now, with that being said, an epidural hematoma, what's the most common uh, blood vessel that's involved? Well, they say it's a rupture of the middle meningeal arteries. Okay, well, where do they come from? Remember, they come from the maxillary arteries. It's very important to remember. So what, how is it that the middle meningeal arteries are damaged? There's an area in the brain that's very weak where all the bones will meet. So let's kind of do something like so, like so, like so. Okay, so we have an area, let's kind of put it right over here, known as the terion, right here, where the ethmoid, sphenoid, all these bones where they meet, okay, skull bones. This is a very weak area, so what happens is that if a patient were to be uh, traumatized to that area, say a car accident, maybe a, um, oh, a, a baseball, right, maybe being thrown to the head, baseball bat, right, you got some problems with somebody, anything like that can lead to damage to this area called the terion, 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 okay, so it's damage to the terion, just behind the terion is our middle meningeal arteries, okay, so how do they present, well, they have what's known as a lucid interval, and what's that, what is a lucid interval, well, that means they come and go, right, they got hit pretty hard, they are um, well, they seem conscious, they seem okay. And then after about an hour or so, or let's say on the way to the hospital, they faint, they become unconscious. And then maybe an hour, maybe half an hour to an hour later, they come back, they back, uh, come back, uh, I don't wanna say come back to life, but they're, they're conscious again. Now, let me draw something here for you. Let's say here's the brain. A little CT, all right, midline fibers. So <clears throat> with an epidural hematoma, you're gonna get something that looks like, well, they say it's biconvex, lenticular, or lentiform, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, lentiform shape. Okay, now I don't necessarily like to use those words, biconvex or lentiform. I just think of a lemon. So if I see what looks like a lemon on CT, I'm gonna say this is most likely an epidural hematoma. Okay, it looks like a lemon. Please remember that. Another one, another hematoma that kind of looks more like a banana. So which one would that be? The banana? That one would be a subdural hematoma. So if you see a lemon, on CT, you're gonna think of epidural hematoma. If you see a banana on CT of the brain, you're gonna think of a subdural hematoma, okay? Now, <clears throat> by looking at it this way, I can tell that, well, this is small, i.e. localized, whereas this seems like it's much larger. That being said, I know that the subdural hematoma can cross the suture lines, whereas epidural will not cross the suture lines, okay? That's just one way of looking at it. Now. 
who what about a subdural hematoma right who gets that who gets a subdural hematoma normally it's due to brain atrophy so who has a s small brain the elderly right elderly alcoholics classically um uh can have some atrophy of the brain chronic alcoholism uh and even babies young babies newborns about a year or so why is because their brain has not fully developed so there's a huge space in between here we go in between the arachnoid and the dura mater so with that being said we have these veins called the bridging veins that are exposed and what happens is if we ever receive trauma <clears throat> excuse me if you ever receive trauma to this area or rather just trauma to the brain uh, in these individuals what can happen is is that the those veins can actually rupture and then it because it is a venous bleed a venous hemorrhage it's a slow bleed so that being said due to the fact that it's a slow bleed come over here they'll present with very vague uh vague neurological symptoms fatigue somnolence um headache possibly okay now for subdural they're going to say crescent shaped again you look for the word crescent. They're not going to say banana. They're going to, they're going to say the word crescent shape. But I want you to I want you to know that if you see a banana, uh, you're going to think of um, of subdural. All right, and I hope that uh, helps clarify subdural versus epidural hematomas.